So you could not shut us up. No, not the speakers tonight, but <laughs> my family. We talked and talked and talked and talked. We talked over each other, under each other, about each other, with each other, by each other, everything. We were just talkers. It was myself, my mom, my brother, and my sister. My mom was so amazing to me. Um, when I look back, I realized that we had nothing. I was from a single parent home. I lived in the projects. But to me and my household, my brother and sister and my mom, and she was like the lioness protecting her cubs, we had everything. We had love. I remember I would talk to um, my sister all the time. We'd talk about boys we liked. We talked about girls we didn't like. We talked about stuff we didn't like my mom did and how we're going to sneak away this weekend to go to that party even though she thinks we're not. Um, yeah, we were all up in each other's business, so much so that when I would talk on the phone, I mean, this is back in the day when there were landlines, my brother would be silently listening on the other end. <laughs> And um, he'd listen and just listen to all my business I'm talking about, right? And then at some point he'll be like, no, you're not. And I'll be like, Craig, stop. This is crazy. And I'd be mortified. I didn't have any space. We talked about everything. Nothing was a secret. Um, until one day I woke up out of my sleep um, by the screams of my mother. She was screaming my sister's name so loud, so piercing. It was like a scene out of a horror movie. Or even worse, it was like when you wake up from a cold sweat in a dream. But it's only that I woke up and realized that it wasn't a dream at all. So I, I got up, and I was, my heart was beating out of my chest, and I, had, I was sweating, and I ran to my mother. I ran to where her voice was coming from. And she was um, in the doorway of my sister's room. And um, I ran over, and when I got to the doorway, I looked in front of me, and I saw my sister. And she was hanging on my closet door. I remember it so vividly. I remember her. I remember everything. And at that moment, everything started to become a blur. Everything faded out. That room that was once so bright, so white, the room we did karaoke in, became dark. Um, my brother, he was to my right. I felt him to my right, but I don't remember him. It was too, it was, it's a blur. And my mom, who was to my left, even her piercing screams and her, st hysteria, her hysteria started to get muted little by little by little until there was silence. And after that day, um, we all went our separate ways. My mother was no longer the lioness protecting us, and uh, she was in and out of mental institutions trying to cope with losing a daughter. Um, my brother kind of turned to the streets. He became, you know, violent and in gangs and things like that. And we weren't talking. I wasn't talking to my mother, and I, um, I went off to school, right? So... When I was in school, I didn't know how to talk anymore. I certainly didn't know how to talk about suicide. I didn't know how to talk about what I had been through. I didn't know how to talk about how guilty I felt that um, I was just in the next room and I didn't know something was going on with my own sister. What kind of person is that? Um, so I created a representative. And I introduced everybody to my representative. And this representative was somebody who I created. It was the shell of me. It wasn't the real me. Um, and I created her because I didn't want to talk about anything. And she was so real, this representative, that she was normal. She was just happy. She was a girl in college in D.C. just like everybody else, you know. She talked about parties, and she was just very surface. Woo, flying over the surface, right? Um, and it was so deep and so weird that um, I had a college roommate for four years. She didn't even know that my sister had committed suicide. She didn't even know that my sister was dead. 
I used to speak about my family like as if we were normal. I just wanted us to be normal again. I didn't want to be judged. Um, and again, I just forgot and didn't know how to talk. Um, so this roommate, she thought she knew everything about the girl she went to sleep and woke up to next every day, right? But she didn't. She knew my representative. One day, I remember coming from, like, a class, and I walked into my dorm room, and she was crying hysterically. I mean, she was, like, bawling. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? Like, I was in crisis mode. What could we do? What's going on? Gabby, tell me what's going on with you. And she looked at me, and with the most hurt and pain in her voice, she said, I don't know what car to pick. My mom's telling me I have to pick a car, and I don't know whether I want the black one or the gray one. And she says if I don't pick it by the end of the day, she's going to choose for me. And in that moment, I was like, are you serious? But I didn't say that to her, right? I go, this is her problem. This is really the depth of her problems. This is what she thought was heavy. This is what she was crying hysterically about. Yet I was carrying around the weight of the world on my shoulders. And that did something inside of me. I got kind of angry at her. I kind of resented her for not understanding life, not understanding that real shit happens and people are going through things. But then it also did something else in me and it made me feel jealous like wow she kind of just got that out didn't she <laughs> so it was inspiring needless to say a few weeks later um I got an English assignment to write about something that had moved me in my life. The English teacher casually said, you know, you could talk about anything, a vacation, a family trip, whatever you want. And I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write about something that I've been keeping inside. I'm going to write about my sister's suicide. I didn't say that out loud. I just thought it. And then when I went back to my dorm, um, it was late at night. It was like the day before it was due. Now, mind you, we had four weeks to do this project. I waited till the night before. So I sat down to my computer and I just started writing, 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 writing. And in the morning, I remember that the entire story was written, but I just don't remember writing it at all. I don't remember the moments. I don't remember how I formed each sentence. I, I don't remember how I did it. I just did it and I knew that it felt good. It felt good, even though it was just on a piece of paper, it felt good to get it out. And um, so I went home for winter break, that break, and I, um, I went to my mom's new apartment, and it just didn't feel like home. I didn't ever feel like I was at home anymore because we weren't talking, and I'd, we were so disjointed. But I wanted to read my English paper to them. And um, so I got up enough nerve, and I said, OK, guys. Um, I sat my brother down and I sat my mom down and I said, I'm going to read this, this English paper to you. And I was real nervous and they didn't know what it was about, but I knew I had to get it out. So I started reading the paper and um, I went through everything about the night, the night before, about remember seeing my sister um, writing her note, saying good night, everything that we had gone through to my mother waking us up with screams, to the flashbacks that I had over and over and over, to the guilt that I felt inside. And in that moment, I looked up to my right, and I saw tears welling up in my brother's eyes. And I, I read to him what I ended my paper with, which was, I just want my brother back. I want him to be nosy again. And he started crying. And I saw him again. That void that had been on his face for so long since we lost my sister was finally there again. And it was hope in his tears. I saw hope and I saw him. And everything started coming into perspective for me. It started, um, 
it started coming back. My mother's sobbing to my right, and I heard her as I was reading that paper and telling her how I was feeling. And um, I started smelling the candles that she, she lit in, that, in her apartment, and it felt like home again. And in that moment, I was reintroduced to my family. It was a different type of family, but we were a family again. And I also realized that silence killed my sister. And it almost took my entire family. And I, I really don't know what um, kept my sister from speaking to us that night or what, why she was keeping secrets. But I do know that um, I'm here today and I'm talking. Thank you for listening. <laughs>